Hey everybody, Joan Zodians here and welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Sundays. This week we're going to be talking about the full moon and it's going to be a really uh, exciting time for a lot of people. There have been a lot of changes under the retrograde and this is one week where all of these changes are going to you know, reach its peak. let's just go ahead and get into it. Have you guys survived the retrograde? If you guys are following me on Instagram, you know I've been posting quite a bit about it. Um, it's an emotional roller coaster for a lot of people right now. Even for me, it's very intense. Um, the Pisces retrograde is savage as fuck. Like seriously, that is, it's no joke this time around. The first retrograde of the year is killing off relationships left and right, whether it's platonic, professional, or romantic. It seems that water itself wants to flush out your life and make room for new life. OK, it's something that needs to be embraced or welcomed right now. And if you already, you know, cause a lot of um, burnt bridges to happen or you washed away relationships without meaning to, I mean, it, it has to happen for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And whether or not people survive this, it's almost like a sink or swim type of mentality right now for a lot of people a lot of people internalizing how they feel and how how it's basically all about them trying to see the bigger picture right now is very difficult for people and that's why you're seeing a lot of people struggle emotionally mentally right now this is a hard and difficult time because so many changes need to take place before the rest of the year can continue all right. This week, the sun is also transitioning out of Pisces into Aries on the 21st. Not only that, we have the full moon, which will either be Virgo or Libra, depending on your time zone, um, the 19th, the 20th and the 21st. You will have to check your moon schedule online to try and find out when where your time zone is so you can um, do your full moon rituals. OK, when we get this full moon, we are going to have to release. OK, well, we talked about the new moon earlier this month and how that's new moon, new equals new energy, right? New emotions because it was under Pisces. This time around, it's going to be either under Virgo or Libra, depending on your time zone. All right. You're going to have to think more realistic about your future relationships, your future goals and where you're headed. All right. And full moons are usually a best the best time to redo your intent, redefine your intent and then release it into the universe. Right. Full moons carry lots of good energy and lots of power. New moon is very similar, but it's like welcoming new energy. Does that make sense? Whereas full moon is releasing the energy and, and learning from the previous new moon. So the time, let me explain it a little bit more because that sounds confusing. So between the new moon and the full moon, right? Between this time period, we will be learning. Our souls are collecting all of this energy because we put new intent out there. And we wanted to discover what that intent means to us. As the full moon comes up, we will find that we will release intent or redefine that intent and carry it into the universe. The things that we learned and want to bring with us into the new phase of the moon. Make sense? And because it's under Virgo Libra, these are good times where it's, it's mostly about relationships and service to the community. Okay. And what I'm seeing right now is that a lot of people are struggling to think outside of themselves right now. And you may have every right to feel that way. You may have every right to focus that energy back onto yourself. That could have been part of your new moon intent. And that's perfectly fine. It's all about being honest and genuine with yourself. What are you capable of handling right now? What can move on in the future with you? It's encouraged heavily to think more positively. A lot of people are dwelling on negative things, negative traumas that happened in their life. Instead of overcoming it, they're dwelling, they're sinking into the abyss of their own emotions and they don't know how to swim out of it. They're, they're struggling. Okay. And you might see that in people where they're just crying, they're whining, they're complaining about things and they may 
And their feelings are valid, all right? That's how you need to see it. People's feelings are valid. That's how they feel. You can't make a person feel anything that they don't want to feel. Okay? You can't make a person do anything that they're not ready to do. And I really learned that the past month. Like This Pisces energy is something to be really embraced right now. Okay. And with the full moon, we need to reconsider how we're, how our approach is going to be, um, individually and as with the community and with the community, right? I can't talk today. <laughs> and when the sun transitions into Aries, we are, we, we will be moving out of a very emotional state of mind and we will be transferring those emotions into fiery Aries. And this is where things will reach its toll, its peak. Okay. Cause the Mercury retrograde isn't, is going to last until around the 28th, depending on your time zone. Okay, it could last until the 29th for you. You need to you need to look at the right ephemeris, right? Now, for people transitioning from Pisces to Aries, we will take all of those emotions and it can easily turn into rage and misunderstandings. This is where you're going to need to be very careful with what you bring forward because you could be projecting more rage onto people that don't that don't um deserve it. OK, you could be projecting rage onto yourself and sabotaging things on yourself. You need to be aware of what you're thinking and what you're feeling and to really deeply reflect on where this rage is and emotions are coming from. OK, emotions are controlled only by us going around and saying people make you feel this way. People do this to you. You're pointing the finger at people. And I know that's the hardest thing to do because that's how you feel. It's everybody else's problem, not your own, or people hurt you and you feel that way. And it's fair to feel that way, right? But the hardest thing for an enlightened person to do or a person who wants to be enlightened is to really see it from their higher selves, a higher perspective, and just see it in a way where the hurt, the pain, the anger is separated from yourself. Like this happened. All right. And I'm tired of it. And I need to put this on the side here and look at it and think logically of why I'm bringing it with me. Why is it still there? What do I need to do to heal from it? Do I confront these people like I've been doing or do I confront that in myself? Because if you're meant to be a healer or you're healing. This is for everybody, okay? You can only heal yourself. You regenerate your own energy. Nobody else can do that for you. And I feel your pain on these things, okay? Because I've had a difficult life too, but we must overcome. We must overcome our pain, our feelings. Everything is bigger than ourselves. We may feel right now that we have to internalize, we have to protect, we have to hide away. You know, people will try to tear you down. People will try to make you feel and provoke you into being that character, that angry character. Whatever the case may be, regardless of what it is, you are the only one in control of how you handle things, of how you see things. You have to speak from your higher self, not your lower self, your higher self. And if you don't know what that means, then you may you may need to research and reflect and meditate on what that even means to you. OK, that is the hardest thing for anybody to do is to see things from their higher self, to see things from an enlightened state of mind where they can remove themselves emotionally going into their spiritual selves. And really looking at things. Like, wow, this happened because of this, and I'm no longer going to be angry at it. I'm going to remove it from myself. I'm going to remove that toxic energy, and I'm going to take that energy and make something productive from it and do something productive with it. Okay. I'm going to be my better version. And it's the most difficult thing for people to do. And if you're not understanding what that means, then you may be in that tight space where you need extra help. Long story short, I'll wrap it up right now. 
I do sell a ebook. It's only a dollar and eleven cents, um, and it and it helps people with spirituality. And I harp on this all the time, but it's true. Spirituality has helped me a lot with becoming enlightened and seeing things from my higher self. Um, it's called the spirituality or the reality. I don't even know my own book name. I can't think. The reality of spirituality. It's a very good read. It's about like fifty something pages. Um, again, only a dollar and eleven cents ebook on my website at zodians.com and hopefully i'm really praying for you guys that you know you can conquer yourselves and see things from a positive perspective versus a negative lower self perspective you know what i'm saying and um if you need to book spiritual guidance you can book with me or one of the goddesses that i currently work with at zodians.com so